Hi everybody, Jules here and welcome to Mystery Lake. We are a new channel that is going to be focusing on uh, Pokemon. It can be Pokemon TCG, Pokemon VGC. The important thing is that it is competitive Pokemon playing. And uh, maybe even other non-competitive things. For example, when the new uh, when the news about the new games that are coming out and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to you are going to receive far more uh, news and information in the upcoming videos. So far, I'm not going to go more into detail. The thing is, uh, the idea uh, of this channel is to bring you uh, some competitive content, meaning, for example, an analysis of the top deck to, in the meta right now, or if it is VGC, the, the, an analysis of the the most played games, the most played teams that are well placing well in the tournament and stuff like that. That's the uh, that's a bit the idea we we have. So, for example, today what I'm going to bring you. Uh, without further ado, let's start. Uh, what I'm going to bring you is the analysis of uh, one of the most played deck currently in the, um, the TCG meta. It is the Zapdos Jirachi deck. So, so this is my personal interpretation of the Zapdos Jirachi. Uh, it has this kind of archetype. This archetype has has seen a lot of play uh, in the pa in the recent uh, weeks. Uh, in every, pretty much in every tournament, uh, both from in the US, in the in the EU, uh, in cups, league, regionals, everywhere, pretty much everywhere, and it positioned itself like one of the most important, one of the strongest deck at the moment. This is mostly thanks to this card, the Zapdos, uh, came out with a team up ex expansion. This is a promo for the pre release, and as you can see, uh, it's attack Thunderous Assault. Does 10, 10 damage plus 70 if it, uh, Zapdos became active this turn, which means that it can be very fast, very effective, taking KOs very early in the game and disrupting the opponent's game from the very beginning. Uh, you can even possibly win if you if you start second and the opponent has only one base Pokemon after turn one, then you have good chances to win in the first turn. So it's really amazing. But of course, in order to uh, utilize this attack effectively, you need to make it. Uh, you make the Zapdos go back and forth from the bench, from the uh, to the to the bench from the active position, and vice versa. And how would you do that? You can do, you can do that with the switches, uh, which we are playing three, in fact. Okay, Titan Liza, No one plays it. I'm the only one because I like. Uh, yeah, I think I'm I'm one of the few that is playing this card. It's not that bad. But uh, yeah, in the end, you you don't don't end up using it too too often. Uh, but it's nice sometimes to have the possibility to choose whether you want to uh, switch your, your, poke, your active Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon or you want to shuffle your end into your deck and draw five cards. Um, but uh, anyway, it is it is in the end uh, a means uh, switch your active Pokemon. Then you also have the goods, of course, the three, we're playing three copies, but four is also fine. And then, in order to get all these items, it could be the switch, the nest ball to get the Zapdos or any other Pokemon, we have the Volkner. The Volkner is, is a supporter that synergizes perfect, perfectly with this deck, as it allows you to search your deck for an item card plus lightning energy. Which means that whenever you have Volkner in hand, you're going to have for sure at least one energy and take care that Zapdos only needs one energy to attack. And you'll also get as, um, an item that could be easily be either an Electro Power if you need it for the KO, or a Switch to if you need to to switch between one active Pokemon and a Zapdos, or a Nest Ball if you need to get, get someone um, in the bench and stuff like that. So this card is absolutely amazing in this deck, and that's why we are playing four of it. Uh, then okay, we have the classic Norwing support. We have uh, eight copies in the total: four Cynthia's, two Erika's, two Lily. This one is the only new card that allows you to draw four cards. Uh, no, sorry, one card for each of the opponent's Pokémon in play. But you can play this only if you have four or fewer other cards, cards in your hand. Uh, this is going to happen quite often because we play all the cards. Eh? We can we usually never have an, an unattached energy in hand. We usually also assign the choice band to the Zapdos, the SK board to the Jirachis. Uh, so it's difficult for us to have. Uh, big, big, big hands. That's why Erika's hospitality come is really handy. Then, of course, we have the Jirachi, which is the, possibly the best card in the format right now, because due to this um, ability that allows you to look at the top five cards in, on the deck of the deck, and if you have a, if you find a trainer there, you can take it and put it in your hand after revealing it to your opponent. And then, 
uh, you shuffle the other card and this card goes to sleep. So it's amazing, of course, because when you don't have anything in, in hand, then you can always rely on the Jirachi for, to get you something. That could be an item, that could be even a stadium, because these stadiums are extreme. We will get to them, but they are extremely important for this deck. So it's pretty much amazing. And also it synergizes very well with the escape board, because in fact the escape board uh, not only reduces the retreat costs of this car of the Pokemon it is attached to. So if this in this case this guy has one uh, of a retreat cost with the skateboard it becomes zero. It means that you can freely retreat it, uh, but also allows you to retreat it even if the Pokemon is uh, asleep or paralyzed, which is always the case when you use the Stellar Wish ability. So it's pretty much it synergizes very well. And it's a strong combination at all, in general. So basically the ideal scenario is to set up, start with the Jirachi and maybe having an x board and then having a Zapdos in the bench so, so that you can easily switch between the two. Then for the other Pokemon we have uh, uh, line 1-1 one, one of Jolteon. Jolteon is it's pretty, it's, a, it's simple, it's simply a pretty good card overall. Because you with one energy you can do 30 plus 30 and also remember we are playing 4 copies of Electro Power so that they can boost uh, um, they can boost this damage together with the choice band if we are talking about X Pokemon, uh, sorry GX Pokemon and stuff like that. So this card is pretty much it pretty solid. That's what I would say. Even the GX is strong, of course, because it prevents all the damage uh, done to the po to this Pokemon on the opposite turn. Uh, so whenever you are facing, for example, a difficult matchup that uh, as can be, for example, the Lycanroc, the Zoro Zoroark Lycanroc. Uh, or um, a matchup in which you have weaknesses in general, you can use the GX attack, deal 110 damage or more if you have the choice band or whatever. Let's keep it below the 1 hit KO range. So you can attack it with the GX, and then after that, he might uh, normally he could attack you and take the KO over, over the Jolton, but with the GX, he cannot do that. And you get the KO the next turn, the turn after. So it's pretty much, it, this is pretty solid. Also, it's a pretty fast GX because it needs just one energy or two energies, which is not a lot. And also, it could become one even for this other attack with the Thunder Mountain Prism Star. Um, as for the other Pokemon, we have uh, the Coco Prisma, which is also very strong for energy acceleration because you can uh, you can use this ability, this, put it in the Lost Zone and attach two energy, two Lightning energy to two Pokemon uh, in your bench. Which is synergize, which synergizes pretty good with this Tapu Koko GX, which is an old card that I had not seen that much play so far, but with this new card, with this new, um, with the team up expansion, basically due to this other card that came out, as seen as uh, and this archetype of deck uh, has risen a lot in popularity. This is because you you can picture a turn in which you have a, I don't know one energy assigned to one Pokemon. You use the Coco Prism Star, you assign two other energies to two other Pokemon, then you play this card, and due to his ability, you can attach all the cards that you want from uh, from other Pokemon. You can uh, you can move the energy card, the energy, the lighting energy card from the other Pokemon to this guy, and switch it to the active position. Which means that in one turn, you will have a 130 uh, damage attacker ready to strike, and you can also you can you can take some pretty important knock up with a Tapu Tapu Thunder GX. So I used to play two of these cards in this deck, then I, I, I adjusted it, and now I play only one. But still, it could be a, it could be a good idea to play two. Sometimes it's a bit redundant, because you can find it in your first hand, uh, maybe as only basic Pokemon, and that's of course not a good scenario. Uh, and then we have the Zero Aura GX, that I put it specifically to counter this Absol, because this Absol has, has also arisen in popularity because of this ability, which says that if your opponent's active Pokemon is a basic Pokemon, its retreat cost is uh, one more, one colorless more. So the fact that this ability normally, uh, okay, is, is good by itself, but the thing is that at the moment, uh, like 50% of the top decks are basic decks. So this one, the Zapdos Jirachi one is a full basic deck, for example. Uh, there are no evolved Pokemon, okay, except for the Jolteon, but some some deck don't play the Jolteon, so it's fine. Also, for the uh, other va 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 variants of this deck that is playing the Pikachu Zekrom GX, that is basic. On Tag Team GX are all basics. So this absolute you can pretty pi pu uh, you can uh, it can it can fit pretty much every every deck. So in this case, it helps a lot in the mirror matches 
because of course you do, cannot retreat the Jirachi even with the escape board. You cannot retreat the Zapdos. Uh, you cannot retreat. You can. You. You. you uh, long story short, it puts you in trouble if you want to constantly uh, move Pokémon in and out of the active position. I put the Zero Aura. Because the zero hour ability with this uh, at, with a tunnel club zone allows you to re to um, uh, retreat the Pokemon the Pokemon every Pokemon which has an a lightning energy attached you can retreat it for free every time so no matter uh, the, the absolute in that case you can always retreat the Pokemon and the other cards are pretty much standard we have the nest Bolt because we are playing as again a full uh, full basic uh, a full uh, basics deck rescue stretcher to retrieve some Zapdos when we lose them or others Pokemon of course. Uh, the Ultra Ball, pretty straightforward, and then, as I said, the two stadiums are really important. So, f let me just clarify first one thing. Um, of course, also the choice are really important because with 80 damage, it's uh, it is okay at the beginning, but then you can become a little bit short of damage with the only this one. So, the Electro Powers and the Choice Band helps a lot in that. Help a lot. So, um, as I was, as before I move to the um, stadium cards and eventually to te play testing this deck, uh, I want to say two things that are not related to these stadium cards in particular, but just to stadium cards. So uh, recently, a bunch of new stadium cards came out. They are all really good, like um, I don't know the Black Market, Lavondros Labyrinth. Uh, so they are all very good um, stadium card, and they are also Viridian Forest is very good. Uh, but so the thing is that currently every every deck. Is playing at least two stadium, and there is a high chance that one of these stadium is a prism, a prism card. card like this one. So what happens is that for this card, whenever you put it in play, they are immune to any other uh, tool, uh, item that uh, that that can uh, discard them. So let's say uh, you uh, we have a, a shrine in, in play, and the opponent plays a, a field blower, it will be able to discard. It will be able to discard the shrine of punishment. But with this card, it doesn't work. So you cannot discard this, as it says here, um, any card, any item or support that played by their opponent, that by the opponent, do not affect uh, this card whatsoever. Which means that in order to remove this, you need to have another stadium card to play. And if you are playing against the Zapdos Jirachi deck, you want to remove this card because it's really, really annoying. It allows the uh, Lightning Pokemon to attack with the one Lightning Energy less, which means that the Zapdos attacks for free, the Jolteon can attack for free or deal 110 damage with just one energy and the Coco can deal potentially a huge amount of, energy, of damage with just two energy so it is a very good card, you want to remove it and you need to have some stadium to do that and the same goes for us if you want, if you're playing against someone else we need to remove their Prism Star and for that we have three stadium in total two Shrine of Punishment and one Thunder Mountain uh, an alternative to the shrine could be the uh, Ether Conservation Area, Ether Paradise Conservation Area, which makes uh, your basics um, lightning and grass basics take 30 damage or less, which is okay. But I think I feel that Zapdos, for example, he has not that much HP, so giving him 30 HP more, it will most likely not change things too much. It could help for the Coco or the Zero Hour because they will get to 200 respectively to 200 and 220 which is a lot of HP. But still it doesn't seem worth to me while the Shrine is really important because again you don't deal. So if you if you took uh, if you consider this card against basics or any, anyway a regular Pokemon then 80 damage plus Electro Power it's a lot of damage can be a lot of damage and for the ones um, for which this damage is not enough you have the other attacker but against GXs this damage it's uh, it's relatively low so it's relatively small so you need the shrine to help you in taking those big KOs now let's jump into texti testing we are looking for opponent we also will see two or three we'll do two or three matches depending on how long they last basically so here we are facing a fairy fairy fire deck so uh, the fairy decks are kind of interesting right now. Most likely can be uh, as uh, if it's if it is a pure fairy deck, it's going to be Gardevoir. Uh, but if it's not, uh, then it's most likely that that fairy in his deck is just nine tails, maybe. Anyway, we don't have a good end uh, because mostly well we have a decent end, but we don't have any supporter, and that's usually uh, less than ideal. 
Also, we are going to star, so we cannot attack with the Zapdos the first. So it's a Grumble deck. I really hate this deck. Like, I, I, I legitimately hate this deck. So we are going to use the Jirachi Oping uh, for a uh, support area. We get the Volkner, which is okay, I guess. So yeah, we can take the escape board, I guess. So not bad, not good either. <laughs> uh, also, we know that... Um, no, not this, the escape board. Also, we know that... Um, our opponent most likely is not playing any, any GX. So, which, which means that our... So, we're going to pass because of it's turn one. Uh, it means that our um, choice band is most likely going to be useless. So, we're looking for the, uh, an uh, Ultra Ball to discard it and draw, it, draw something uh, instead. So, um, he is going to get as much basic as he can. So, for what, one of you do, who don't know what the Grumble does, uh, you can do basically his attack. You, he, he, he can attack with just one energy. And if you have no other card in, in your hand, uh, the attack will deal like 30, 130 damage, no, 160 damage in total. Yes, uh, so it does 30 damage plus other 130, I think, or something like that, if you don't have any card in, his, in your hand. It's just annoying. I wouldn't say it's a good deck. Maybe I guess the uh, Zapdos Jirachi couldn't even be good because you can take the KO over the Zapdos in one turn. But other than that, it's definitely I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's a good deck right now to play. So don't play it. Exactly. <laughs> that's the that's the most important thing. Uh, so we can either play a take a nest ball or an ultra ball here. So one thing that could help us is the jolt here, because if we get the jolt and then we can knock out one of the grumble because it, it has 100. Oh wait, it, it, it maybe has 160 HP. No, 130 I think. I think he has 130 HP. Um, 130 HP means... Okay, let's take the Ultra Ball. 130 HP means that uh, we can eat it, we can uh, knock it out with most likely with uh, with the Jolteon plus Electro Power. Uh, and we, if you use Electro Power and the Jolteon GX uh, attack, his GX attack is not going to be able to knock it, knock us out with the next Grumble because he's going to play the next Grumble after that. So it could be it could be good to have a Jolteon prepared. And now I'm not going to use the Thunder Mountain, or I can I guess I can use the Thunder Mountain, and it's not a big difference, uh, honestly. Um, I mean I can attack already with the Jolt. Uh, no, I'm going to not use the Thunder Mountain right now. I have the energy that I need, I don't I don't need to use the Thunder Mountain. Okay, we got the Coco again, which is actually cool. Then we're going to take the K over this uh, Snubble here. Of course, it's not ideal, meaning that now he's going to promote the Grumble with an energy and he's going to attack. He's most likely going to have zero card in his hand, so it's going to KO us and whatever. Or maybe he doesn't have a Grumble because he promoted the other Snubble, so it doesn't really make sense. Uh, I know he does. He does have the good. So this is actually pretty interesting right now. Because he has a Grumble with 130 HP, and we and the, we have a Goodsman. So if only we we had an Electro Power, that would be amazing because we could Goodsman this Grumble in and kill it uh, and KO it. So we, we we will be we would be able to disrupt his uh, plays a bit. He's going to KO the Jirachi, which is actually very bad. Well, we can take another one, of course. Okay, so he just discarded card, you see. So, yeah. Yeah, we are in a less than ideal position. Uh, um, so, we should use the Volkner to get the Electro Power and knock out the, the Grumble here. So it's going to get to do uh, 130. No, wait, 160 plus the choice band that this guy has is going to be 100 and 
It's going to be 190 already. Oof. No, wait. Yeah, it's 130 plus 30, so 190, yes. We, which means that we will risk a lot, basically. So we take an Electro Power just to be sure, because, I mean, we need the KO. Now what we could do, now what we could do could be to use the GX. Because if we use the GX, then he promotes us double and he cannot knock us out. That's the, that's my idea at least. So yeah, I would do that. I don't know if it's the right move, but I would do that anyway. We need to uh, save ourselves, most basically. And also we have the Tabu Koko, so if he now promotes the not the Snubble, so, uh, as I expected, if he evolves it, if he evolves it, we can still knock it out with the with the Guzma and the Koko that we have. Because we can just uh, uh, no Guzma in, uh, the double slash grumble in, and then put the Coco. Yeah, we have three energies in place, so we will be able to attack, and we can just knock it, knock it out. So a Guzma the Zapdos. Okay, I don't know why would you do that. I do not understand. He has three cards. In his end, so does not even the, if he has the grumble. So he lost two snubble and one grumble. So oh, it doesn't do anything. Well, it's good for me. Eh? It's good, very good for me. Honestly, I'm. I will not even put the. I will not even put the Coco in, in play then. I could just switch. And knock out. With the with the head bolt attack. So now he has no Grumble in, in place, and that's not the situation you want to find yourself in if you're playing this deck. Honestly, it is definitely not the situation you want to find yourself in. Uh, two cards from your discard pile into your end. Okay, he's now going to put a Snubble and a Grumble, I guess. No, two Snubble, okay. Fair enough. But he still, he still, he, he still won't have any uh, Grumble to evolve this turn. So I'm, I can easily, and I, that's what I'm going to do, Guzma the Snubble with one energy attached. I'm going to Guzma the dead uh, Snubble in and kill it with and KO it with the uh, Zapdos. I can already tell that's what I'm going to do. So as you can you can see the problem of this deck here, the, the, the Grumble used to be it used to be more um, say it it used to be just better honestly. It just used to be better, but now with all these Pokemon with uh, a decent amount of HP. And it, Jolton is not even one of the tankiest, nor, nor is Zapdos. But uh, you just struggle to keep up the pace with this kind of deck right now. I can kill all the Snubble, for example, and as I have already done that, so I've been able to disrupt so his play so far by knocking out, knocking, knocking out the. Uh, s sniping out the Snubbles. So that he, he, he just was not able to play that much. So I don't want to use. So right now I have a lot of a bunch of useless cards in my hand, but nevertheless I don't want to play the Cincy because if I play the Cincy I will lose the Coco, and the Coco actually is pretty important for me because now I can knock out this Nubble, he will play the other one and have the Grumble, he will knock out the Zapdos, uh, but then with the double Coco GX I'm going to be able to get the KO. I'm going to be able to get the KO over the Grumble because he has 30, one, uh, 130 HP and I do 130 damage. Uh, so I don't want to use the Cynthia's yet. I will use it as soon as I play the Tapu Koko GX. As soon as I put the, the Tapu Koko GX into play, I'm going to use the the, um, the Cynthia. Because now he's going to evolve, attack, take the KO over the Zapdos, which is fine. Okay, the Great Ball. Yeah, he, basically what you do with this deck is just to try to finish to empty your end as soon as possible. Uh, but the thing is, the thing is now he's going to KO the Zapdos, but I have already many counterplays. Uh, well, not many counterplay, but I have a counterplay in mind. And also, I it doesn't seem that he's going to be able to KO the Zapdos at all because he doesn't. He has still has two energy, two cards in his end, so. I don't know. He has two Oranguru, which I don't understand. Why would you have it? Okay, you can draw two times. So now he's going to maybe put a Ultra Ball as first card. 
draw it with Uranguru, discard the other two, so we can deal. Yeah, it's just too. It's just too difficult to pull off this strategy. I, fe I fear. I fear it's too slow. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's exactly what he did. He took two cards, so that uh, the Ultra Ball plus two cards, so he could discard them, and took a uh, basic, so that he can put it in the bench. F, um, one hand, uh, one empty hand. And they'll deal 160 damage for the KO over Zapdos. It's not that worth, honestly. <laughs> it's really, really not that good. Well, it's not even that bad, of course. Yeah, but uh, but it's not amazing. It's not amazing. For sure. So we can even not attach the energy. We can just uh, put the Tapu Koko in. Move the energies. Move him to the active position and just Cynthia finally. We get uh, Tabu Koko Prism, which is useful because we have two energies there. Uh, we can also play um, eventually um, an Erika's Hospitality next turn. So let's take the KO over the Grumble. So I don't know who, wh what's. Now, what can he do? Honestly, I don't know what can he do now. Because assuming that he has a Grumble, an energy and the choice band, so he needs to have a Grumble, an energy and the choice band. But even if he knock, knock me out, then I have Electro Power and Jolteon ready to attack. So I think we should have this game in hands right now. I think we should have this game. It's difficult because usually when you have single prize attacker against GX, Jexis, you are in some kind of favorable position, eh? because yeah, you can take as simple as that. You take two prizes. Uh, yeah, sorry, you take one prize for every KO. He takes two prizes if he knock knock your GXs out. But yeah, he's not able to knock uh, knock us out. Also, he was too slow to pull the to pull the strategies off. The st his strategies off. Or we were just faster. That's the thing. That's uh, Zapdos Jirachi deck is uh, really, really fast. It's a fast-paced deck, and also, I think this will. Uh, I think this version, the one that I'm playing, is not even the, the fastest one. If you, if we might, we might say. Uh, so yeah, he's going to do 190 damage. So he's going to take the KO over the Coco, but it's not uh, enough. It's not going to be enough. So yeah, uh, we uh, we are good. We're just going to attack, attach an energy to the Jolteon, then put a zap those, then use the en the power of this Tapu Koko Prism Star, assign the other energies. Uh, well, use this Stellar Wish just because yes. Take a switch. Not that we need it. Retreat the Jirachi in favor of the Jolteon. Use Electro Power. Use Erika's Hospitality. We do not get another Electro Power, oh, of course. We do. Yeah, we are doing. We're <laughs> uh, that that is not cool. That is not. <laughs> we shouldn't do. You shouldn't do that. <laughs>